I'm not talking to somebody like that. You have to hang on to God even if the rest of the world don't want God. You have to stand with God even when the rest of the world may turn its back on God. Because you got to remember who walked with you through your valley. You got to remember who was there for you, my friend, when nobody else was. You got to remember who was your mother when you were motherless. Who was your father when you were fatherless. Who was your friend when you were friendless. Who was your family when you didn't have family. You got to remember who made a way out of no way. You got to remember who put money in your hand, clothes on your back, food on your table, a roof over your head, a vehicle for you to ride in. You got to remember who was there when people that opposed God were not there. That's what I'm talking about. And you have to stand with God. Come hell or high water, you have to stand with Father. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I'm saying there is a love that runs deeper than a mother's. Can I talk about it? Can I talk about it? You have to be faithful to the one that was faithful to you. You have to be loyal to the one that was that is loyal to you always in every situation, in every aspect of your life. No matter what you all have been through in your life, you have to remain faithful and connected to the one that's going to give you a new life, that has given many of you a new life. And not only in this life, but in the next life, in the world to come. Remember what Jesus said, he used the term in the world to come, but he was talking about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And he was saying anybody that, you know, pretty, that anybody that, I was going to say pretty much, but no, he said anybody that speaks a word against his name, it'll be forgiven. He said, but blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven. He said, not in this world, neither in the world to come. So there is a world to come. There is another existence. You are already in eternity because you're already an eternal being you are a living soul um, god breathed into um, adam's, nost adam's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul you are already a living soul you are already an eternal being that is locked within the confines of time because you are encased you are entrapped you are confined in a flesh human body See, it is the body that is under the authority of time, not you. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. I just said something else. The body will expire, not you. But you are to fear the one that can cast both your soul and your body into hell. Why? Can I talk about it? Can I talk about it? See, in Jesus Christ, the second death, will have no hurt on you. You understand? Has no authority over you. The second death is eternal damnation. Uh, being separated from God forever and ever and ever and ever. Burning, burning, screaming, screaming. You understand? Your hope for tomorrow should be Jesus Christ. He is the only hope that's out there. He is the only hope that's for tomorrow. You take Jesus out of the picture, we're all hopeless. You may as well just live, die, and go and accept whatever judgment God, you will, that sin has placed on us by our own actions. But thank God for Jesus. Because Jesus is tomorrow. You understand? Know and by that I mean, he's your hope for tomorrow. That's what he Okay? Even though he said, take no thought for tomorrow. But what he was saying is, don't worry yourself about things that have not even transpired yet. Live in the moment. That's what I believe he was saying. Live in the moment. Live in the second. Don't worry about what could happen. Don't worry about what might happen. Just know that God holds your future. And that nothing happens that he does not allow. Because he's got full control. I'm hearing because he's got the whole world in his hands. Even as it pertains to the little children. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Permit them to come into me. Let them come into me. Little children of spirit, y'all. Yes, their little their little bodies and faces are so cute and all that. But they're living souls, they're spirit. A spirit can go through a wall. Say nothing hurt a spirit. Nothing to hurt a spirit. Uh, even though, you know, there are people that, you know, we cared about that have died tragically. Um, that body may have suffered that, but the person was in the body. 
A spirit can go through a wall. A spirit can travel through a door because it has no 3D substance. You have to walk after the, after the spirit to understand, to understand the things that are of the spirit and as well as the things that are of the flesh. You have to separate the spirit from the flesh. The same way with this world, you have to separate the horrors that you see going on in this world from the from um, the promises of God and by that I mean you have to stay focused on the promises of God that's what your focal point should be on and as it pertains to you yourself you have to be concerned about the things that are that are of the spirit because that's who you are okay I, maybe I didn't explain that the way I wanted to but what I'm saying is don't focus on things that are really not important it's not that our temples flesh temples are not important but you must remember it's not who we are with spirit there's no way around it. There is no way around it. Before God placed the spirit of life in Adam's empty body, that was nothing but a lifeless vessel. A lifeless body made out of dirt, animated into what is called flesh. We don't even know what flesh is. Really. But God is so, he's so magnificent. He created the veins and the blood vessels and the muscles and the capillaries and the, the bone and the bone marrow and all this and that, the liver and heart and lungs and eyes and, and what, even what our eyes are made out of and what our ears are made out of, the eardrum. And God Almighty created all of that. And none of that is really us. We are spirits in that. You understand? We are spirits in our flesh houses. The Bible calls our, our bodies temples. It's our house, what we live in while we're on earth. I think that's why a lot of people, probably God gives them the grace to tolerate uh, being what this world calls quote-unquote homeless. They're not homeless. They're spirits in their flesh house, their temple. They're not homeless. That's why they can survive. And they're not going to leave this world until God Almighty get ready for them to leave this world, no matter what the will of some devil that run this world may say. And that's not no not to anybody specific. It's just a not to the entire system of this world. That desire other people um, live in lack and suffer. And then the people that are, form the structure of this world, they want to make sure that they live in lavish lives off the back of the people. But God is judge, God is jury, and he will judge the wicked. There will be no rest for the wicked. Of course this world is unfair. Satan um, is the God of this world, little g. And like I said, if it were not for divine intervention, it would be over for all of us. It would be over for all of us. This world is um, it's pollution, it's polluted, it's filthy, it's dirty, it's nasty. Uh, not just physically, but spiritually, you know. And it may not be everywhere, no, but uh, it's like people, and I'm not, I'm not talking about everybody, okay, but certain people, they don't care about nothing no more, you know, um, not everybody, but y'all know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. I, I, I just don't, it's, it's hard, it, it's kind of difficult to get your mind around it, you know, I would think it's kind of diff difficult to get your mind around it. Just how this world is, right, you know? Um, and then the energy that you can fill off of certain people, especially for those of us that are empaths, it's like, and I know people are going through things, but you got to understand something. You are the company you keep in some aspect of the word, sometimes, maybe not every time, but, and by, you know how, pe you know how people say you are what you eat? Look at the company some people keep. Because a lot of the energy that people are carrying, it may not even be their own. It could be the, the people around them. They desire to be around toxic people. People that backbite all day, gossip all day, spread lies all day, grimy. And I'm, let me tell you guys something. Throughout my course of life, and even especially in various workplaces, I have worked in environments around some filthy, grimy, gutter, ghetto -ite people. I'm talking about gutter. Um... I'm not even going to elaborate because some people are just so gutter that it just does not make any sense. And I can fully understand why some people don't want to be around certain people. And everything is not a racial thing. 